welcome back. As a part of Ocean Week, we are going to sum up corals. Let's start with, honestly, a very complex question, which is, what is coral? First things first, it's an animal, which is weird. We'll get into it. An individual thing of coral is called a polyp, which has a little mouth opening, which leads to a little stomach. This is, like, oversimplified, but they take in food, which are really small organisms, like from microscopic zooplankton to small fish, and they secrete calcium carbonate, which is really to the limestone. The coral lives on that chunk of limestone, and it grows larger over time as more and more calcium carbonate is secreted. So that's, like, the animal-y part of coral in the mouth, stomach, but now we're going to get into the more planty part about them, which involves a symbiotic relationship with a class of algae called zooxanthellae or xanthellae. This isn't really like part of the coral. It's a separate organism, but it forms as much as 30% of the tissue in a polyp, as well as the color in most cases. So it's easy to conflate the two, but they are separate. The zooxanthellae is like fully operating as a normal plant, so it can take energy from the sun and photosynthesize and make lots of yummy things for the coral, like glucose and glycerol and amino acids. And the coral is like, yay, I got you. And it gives it a safe place to live and food in the form of carbon dioxide and phosphates and nitrogenous waste, so they're like best friends, plant and animal, doing their thing, living in peaceful harmony. Very cute, very fun. The bad news is when coral gets stressed, they literally eject their zooxanthellae, which results in coral bleaching. The ejection does increase the coral's short-term chance of survival if the stress can subside and they can regain algae at a different time, but if these conditions persist, the coral polyp will eventually die. Corals can get stressed for a host of reasons, but largely because of an increase in water temperature. An increase of about one degree Celsius or two degrees Fahrenheit can cause bleaching. Bleaching is happening on an unprecedented scale. About 60% of the world's reefs are at risk due to human-related activities, and estimates say that over 50% of the world's coral reefs will be dead by 2030. Other than rising temperatures, bleaching can also be triggered by overfishing, herbicides, extreme low tide and exposure, cyanide and explosive fishing, which just why are we pollutants and more. But lowering our emissions, growing and replanting coral from nurseries, creating marine protected areas, which are like wildlife parks for the ocean, not overfishing, and just like generally taking care of the earth can help the coral reefs to grow and thrive, or at the very least slow down the bleaching process. Which is so important! Coral reefs are amazing! Sometimes they're called the rainforest of the sea because they are some of Earth's most diverse ecosystems. They take up less than 0.1% of the world's ocean area, but they are home to 25% of all marine species. So countless sea life depends on coral reefs for survival. They make the seabed more stable, clean the water, protect our shoreline by absorbing 97% of wave energy, and obviously are home to so many little fishies. So let's protect them and make sure they stay safe and cool. Stay tuned for more Ocean Recaps!